Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, I am Evelyn the Pink Sheep and this is my Learn to Crochet with the Pink Sheep series. So this is video one of my series and we are going to go over the tools that you need um, to start crocheting and we're going to learn how to create a chain row. So I always suggest when I'm teaching someone how to crochet that they purchase a size six, which is a super bulky yarn. And I'll show you guys really quick what that would look like. So if you are looking at yarn in a yarn aisle, so you can go to Walmart, Michaels, Joann's, any craft store, you'll want to look at the back of the label. And let's see if we can zoom in on this for you. So you will see this little marker right here, which is a little ball of yarn with a number on it. And that number should say six. So that is a super bulky size yarn. Um, that is going to ensure that you can clearly see your stitches. The other thing that I would recommend is to get a nice large hook. This is a super cheap 16 millimeter hook. Um, so if you can find a 15 millimeter or a 16 millimeter hook, most of the stores will have these cheap blue ones um, for very cheap. I mean, they're like three to five dollars. So that's what you can start out with. I am going to be using one of my own 3D printed hooks. Um, if you actually, if you purchased one of my Learn to Crochet kits out of my Etsy shop, you may have one of our 3D printed hooks. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to get started. All right. Now that you've got your yarn and your hook, so like I said, I am using a super bulky size six weight yarn and a 16 millimeter crochet hook. All right, you are going to take your yarn and you're gonna create a slip knot. To do this, you're going to cross one piece of the yarn over the other, creating what looks like one of those little ribbons. Okay, there you go. And then you are gonna take the piece that's on top, this end piece, and you are going to bring it back behind that loop and you are going to pull it through but not all the way so you want to leave this little tail and then you want to tighten that into a knot okay so now you've got your slip knot so this end should actually pull back and forth easily because you're going to take your hook and you are going to insert it in there and you're going to tighten it around the shaft of the hook before you get to the handle okay to make sure that that's got enough space from here, we're actually going to create our first chain. So this is how you start all of your projects in crochet, um, unless you are working with like a magic ring beginning, which you may see in some patterns, um, and we'll cover that in another video. But for now, we're going to work on our chain. So this is a great one to practice because this is where you work on your tension. If you create a chain that is too tight, you're going to have issues starting your first row because it'll be hard to get your hook into the um, into the actual chain spaces that you create. If you make it too large, then that part of your project will look a little bit funkier at the beginning than the end. So in order to create your chain, you're going to take your yarn and you're going to yarn over your hook. I like to hold onto the knot that I created and I'm going to take that yarn and pull it through that first um, loop created. Okay, so then doing the same thing again, I'm going to wrap the yarn around my hook and I'm going to pull it through. And you repeat this process, wrapping the yarn around your hook and pulling it through until you have chained however many stitches that you need to start your pattern. So sometimes it's nice to just practice making these chains because once you create a few of these once you create a few stitches you can look back at your chain and you can look and see do the stitch spaces that you've created look even are there some that are smaller than others or do they look right about the same the more you practice the easier it's going to get for your chain to look um, cohesive so you'll have the same tension across the entire chain and you want to make sure that you're that if you are going to start your next row that you're going to be able to insert your hook into that chain easily to bring the yarn back through 
Okay, so let's do that again from the very beginning one more time, starting with our slip stitch. So this, the, um, I mean our slip knot. So the slip knot is how you're gonna start all of your chains, so it's really important to practice and make that, make that become kind of second nature to create these. But again, you're gonna take your yarn and you're going to cross a, one piece over the other to create the loop here. And then this piece that's coming across the top, you're gonna make it, let's see if I make that small. I'm gonna take this piece behind the loop and then I'm gonna reach through and I'm gonna pull it through, but not all the way. I wanna make sure that I leave this tail so that I'm tightening it up. And there is my slip knot. So, in order to create my chain, I'm going to insert my hook again into that slip knot. Um, and I forgot to mention, I do hold my hook with what is called a knife grip. There are two main ways that people hold their crochet hooks. One of them is called the pencil grip, where you actually hold your hook like a pencil. And the other one is the knife grip, which is what I use in my videos. That's how I crochet. So I'm gonna hold my hook. I'm gonna take this yarn. The slip knot is gonna be facing the same side as the front of my hook. And I'm going to wrap that, hook, that yarn around. This is called yarning over and I'm going to pull that yarn through that loop. And then usually I use this finger to stop, uh, stop the yarn right beneath where that tapers off. And I'm wrapping it again, pulling it through, using this finger to pull the yarn loop down a little bit. I usually have this hooked around my pinky here. And then I'm gonna wrap it around pull it through, use this finger to kind of guide that yarn down, wrap around. The more you practice these chains, the easier it's gonna to be to find out what situation works best for you as to how you want to hold your yarn, how you want to hold your working chain, how you want to hold your hook, and how you incorporate all of those things together to make it easy um, and to feel start feeling more natural. So just making a nice long chain. And again, once I get done with my chain, I'm going to spread it out and take a look. And just see how even my stitches look. For me, creating um, tension, creating a nice even tension with my stitches has been pretty easy. I think for some people it may come a little more natural than others, but that's why you just need to practice and check those stitches out. Make sure that if you are going to insert your hook into one of those spaces that your hook inserts easily, that you don't have to fight to get your, to get your hook into that space because you're gonna need those spaces to be roomy enough to where you can easily work back across the chain, which is what we're going to cover in our next video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Um, I will have links in my bio to the yarn and hook, uh, the yarn that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, as well as some hooks that you can use, as well as a link to my Learn to Crochet kit. So you can purchase a kit from my Etsy shop that has a hook and yarn included so that you can follow along easily. Thank you so much for joining in and I hope you have a wonderful day.